Uh, you could also find these over here in the um, over on the uh, layer properties as well. But I find it a little bit easier to just to, uh, adjust them uh, right here in the uh, timeline. And at this point, we're going to adjust the uh, Z depth on the arm. Uh, so we're going to send this backward. And so I'm just going to drag down on the Z. And I can actually probably do it even less. There we go. So pulls back. And then on this next frame, it's over there. And of course, I could do the same thing with this hand if I want that to uh, go back as well. Let's see, pull this. So all sorts of control there. And another uh, simple thing I like here is that you can just use your standard cut and paste hotkeys. Uh, so just you know the hotkeys for cut and paste in every single program out there will also work for uh, the timeline. So uh, if I were just on this frame, for example, I could cut that off of there and just paste it over this way, paste it over here. And that's also another way of just clearing out uh, extra frames. So to remove that extended exposure, I could just cut it off like that. And as well, um, I should make this little point. You know, when I had this, uh, all my properties folded up for the hands here, I was kind of making these like uh, master keyframes for uh, all the properties going down the board. But if I had this uh, unfolded here, and let's say I just wanted to keep uh, my position keyframes, but get rid of the scaling on the X and the Y, I could just roll over these and select them, cut them off like that. So I do maintain. Uh, the position keys, but I've gotten rid of uh, the scaling over that way. And uh, obviously, too, you can uh, adjust these just by, let's say, moving them that way. So I'm trying to think if there's uh, anything else I need to wrap up here. Well, oh, you know what? <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I didn't actually show you guys any of the um, inverse kinematics. I uh, rigged everything up uh, for that but I didn't actually uh, demonstrate it. So uh, at any time, you can go over here to your inverse kinematics button and make use of that. Uh, usually what I end up doing uh, to show all the bones, uh, just a, a quick way of doing that would just, just be to select everything. Uh, so it would be uh, Command A, or I guess on the PC, that would be uh, Alt A or Control A, whichever one selects all. Uh, and then you can see uh, all the bones that are uh, connected through here. And this one right here is actually the um, the master peg. Okay, so if you're wondering, well, wait, why do we have um, a bone from here to here and then to here? Uh, and also this one, that's that uh, master peg coming into play there, uh, which is quite useful actually uh, to have uh, that one extra bone on that end. And then also too, you might notice this uh, little one jutting off here. That's just uh, an extra handle for uh, controlling uh, the hand like so. So there you go, that's just, um, how you make use of your inverse kinematics. And of course, uh, you're not limited to just having, uh, you know, kind of this uh, single continuous bone here. I could have another one coming off this way for a second or third or fourth arm, whatever your character uh, needs to work with. And um, inverse kinematics is not actually my favorite way of um, animating something. I think it's kind of overrated uh, because I, I kind of find that you always have to do a little bit of adjusting, uh, regardless of you know how precise you've uh, rigged up your character. But it's a quick way of getting things from you know a f one position dramatically into another one, and then like for example here. So I've got it at that point, and then probably I'm going to want to go then and uh, turn it off, and then just select this hand and be able to rotate that. You know, so. All right, well, hopefully that uh, demystifies uh, some of why uh, Toon Boom Animate is a better program for character animation. Uh, let me show you guys one last thing. This is a little project I set up uh, just to play around with some of the uh, multiplane uh, features in Animate. And you can see it's just a pinball kind of zooming down uh, toward the end of the table here. And the cool thing about this is that uh, these elements on stage are not uh, the things that are scaling or moving forward. Okay, so it's the actual camera, all right, uh, that is animating forward. And of course, the ball is moving too, but uh, the paddles and the uh, flipper—they're just staying in place. 
So if you want to take a look at uh, some of the source file for this here, you can see uh, that, uh, well, a little bit just of the organization here. Here's the ball. This is the kind of, kind of the main thing uh, moving, going down. And it's actually changing its uh, z-depth uh, as it goes backward. So uh, it really doesn't matter, uh, again, where the uh, ball is um, or the ball layer is uh, uh, stacked. Okay, so even if I were to move this up above, let's say the bumpers and the flippers, you can see that it's not visually making any sort of change here on the stage like that. Okay, so it just goes down again, does the same thing. It's in front of the same things as it was before. Uh, so you can kind of get out of this mindset of having to, to always um, consider your uh, your layers as uh, your hierarchy guide. Let me just get that back to how I had it before. Uh, let me just undo that. And uh, another big thing that I like is that uh, your filters uh, become uh, these layers of their own too. So they're kind of like these um, uh, parents with children. So I've dragged uh, my bumpers, my flippers, the ball, these things with uh, underneath this blur layer here. Um, and so whatever is uh, going on with the blur layer, uh, these will be affected by it. So when I start things off here, this blur has a radius of two. And if I were to click over here to the render view, you'd actually uh, see that come into play. And then you can change uh, just the blur independent of all your objects over time. So that's a very easy way of controlling uh, everything at once. Okay, so I don't have to go and adjust the blurring on every single one of these objects and layers. I've just got it all contained uh, into this one little area here. And at any time, of course, you can always go play around with all the different effects. They are down uh, there, if you're looking for them. And then, uh, let's see, this is getting cut off a little bit, but um, you can see at the very bottom here is uh, my camera layer. There we go. And uh, if you are going to do this uh, on your own to uh, animate a camera, one thing you do need to be aware of is that uh, you'd go over here to create a camera, and uh, then I'd leave that camera layer selected and just go over here to create a peg for it. And that peg is the thing uh, that ends up uh, moving. And another cool thing about these peg layers is that I could actually detach the camera from it, okay? And then, so, okay, you're not going to see, you're not seeing the camera moving at all. But uh, the peg layer still has all of its keyframes. And then, so if I wanted to, I could then drag it right back onto the peg layer. And then the camera again is uh, moving. And a flash uh, CS4 does have uh, some Z depth uh, properties to it now, which you can animate. But they don't actually have a camera that you could do what I just uh, showed you with. You can't, you know, basically pan and zoom out. Uh, uh, with a standalone camera. So you're kind of always stuck to whatever uh, the stage is seeing. And if you were to do uh, a similar effect like this, uh, you'd basically have to put everything inside of a movie clip and then tween that forward. And um, I just don't think you're going to get uh, the same kind of control. Actually, I know you're not going to get the same kind of control. So that, uh, that about does it for um, some of the uh, main comparison points, I think, uh, between the two programs uh, from an animator's perspective. And of course, you know, Flash CS4 again is it's going to remain kind of the king for you know web development. But uh, you know, I think Adobe has moved away from it being a uh, character animation program, which uh, you you know for for those animators out there that have uh, been with the program for a long time, you know, it's well, it's not like we haven't seen the writing on the wall. <laughs> there hasn't been many versions that have done uh, much in the way for. Uh, helping us animate quicker. Uh, so, you know, it is nice that uh, there's another 2D uh, program out there like Animate that has uh, been, you know, really stepped up and I think is actually developed by um, people that are really familiar with, you know, what an animator uh, needs in their uh, little tool chest. All right, so that about does it. Bye.